that remembrance of that celebrating that is guru purnima <coughs> typically the guru purnima is a day people come and respect the guru and start taking a start taking the study of the teachings of the spiritual masters upanishads vedanta because this period starts with the what you call as chatur masa the four months of rainy season so four months of rainy season is dedicated to study of the scriptures spirituality not only you study discuss disseminate the knowledge of atma gnana to the masses that is why it's called chatur masa now the chatur masa is only celebrated for swamijis because four months they can stay in one place okay chatur masa is not for us the chatur masa is for each of us all of us the time to dedicate to go back to our roots and understand the deeper spiritual truths the study of essential truths which liberates us uplifts us that is called chatur masa and no wonder that begins with the guru purnima respecting dedicating the time which is follows for four months which follows for the study of the highest wisdom which is given by the masters to study that and imbibe in our life that is guru purnima that is the day you come in every year that i will study i will learn i will teach this is guru purnima guru purnima is the day dedicated to you para brahma in you guru purnima is day dedicated by you dedicated for studying the ma realized masters rushis whatever the teachings are there no 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 chatur masa is not for us for, for us it's for swami ji who are actually left samsara please tell me which rushi was swami ji which rushi was sanyasi all the rushis way including veda vyasa maharshi everybody was grahastha all rushis all spiritual masters were grahasthas they did they lived up the highest truths in their life they had family life they contributed to society meaningfully in terms of what you call today science and technology the greatest truths the greatest discoveries in mathematics goes back to rushis but for the truths which are discovered by rushis in the mathematic mathematical truths which are discovered in vedic literature in vedic time we will not have the all this technology what we today the basic fundamentals of the algebra and some of the higher scientific discoveries were done by rushis including the science related to ayurveda health science our rushis were able to perform the operations surgical operations which are much more precise than today's scientists today's doctors charaka and sushruta were well known for plastic surgery long before the world called plastic surgery came into the world and all this contribution has come from the rushis and all them are grahasthas now how come it has gone into your head that spirituality is for monks to rededicate ourselves to, to the teaching of rushis is guru purnima and greatest rushi of them is shri veda vyasa he saw in his wisdom the coming age of kaliyuga which spans over few thousand years and for kaliyuga how to take care of the teaching how to take care of this wisdom of self realization atma gnana he contemplated and brought the vedas rig veda yajur veda samaveda atharvana veda upanishads and communication in the form of puranas so that's why to great master veda vyas maharshi because of his service because of his dedication today we have rudiments of the self realization atma gnana science is available to you but for his vision which was which was actually 5023 5033 years ago where was maharshi was lived 5033 years ago all the wisdom would have got destroyed in multiple waves of invasion which happened in india waves and waves and waves of invasion 
which destroyed the basic fabric of India. One of the invaders burned the Nalanda University, which took six months to burn the books which was collected in the university. More than 130 people, people in from 130 countries used to come and study there. The whole, the foreign invaders, many of them attacked the roots of this country in terms of wisdom, the literature they destroyed. Many of the people who are wise men were destroyed, killed. The leadership of the society was gone. In spite of that, the spiritual truths are available to you. And country India is a living civilization which imbibes the ancient truths. That's because of the wisdom of Sri Vedavyasa Maharshi. And his foresight in bringing that wisdom to you, me, in the form of Purana and stories. A child born in our family doesn't require the Vedic tradition. He remembers, the, he knows the wisdom through the stories. And this is possible in spite of all education system getting destroyed. And that, this is the day offering gratefulness to Sri Vedavyasa Maharshi, who in his compassion and wisdom offered us all the truth, the cream of truth, in a way we can digest, understand and imbibe in our life. The greatest truth which he said is that you are, you are that supreme reality. Please tell me, any religion in the world has the courage to say that you are the truth. And that was the wisdom which came to us. How bold somebody should be, how courageous somebody should be to say the truth. And all this literature, Veda, Upanishad, Purana, the large literature which is there is only to support the simple truth that you are the supreme reality. The moment you realize you become free, you will become mukta, jivan mukta, liberating free. Oh no, no, jivan mukta, that's after death. Mukti is after death. That's why we have a celebration. After 12th day, we say, the person has gone to Vaikuntha, right? Or gone to Kailasa. Vaikuntha and Kailasa is considered to be your destination after death. No. That is not Mukti. After your death, so many people will get Mukti from you. <laughs> okay? Baba, go <laughs> Okay? They celebrate their Mukti from you. But you have to celebrate your mukti when you are alive. That is actually the teaching of Vedanta, Upanishad. When you are alive, if you are able to celebrate your mukti, that is called Jivan Mukti. So Guru Purnima is the day of the Independence Day. It is the celebration of independence of you. You are celebrating independence of the country. But have you celebrated the independence of you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have celebrated. My wife went for Tower Mare. I was one month, I was free. <laughs> that is not your independence. That's your dependence. The independence you celebrate when you become free, when you realize that you are not a body, mind, or intellect, you are pure consciousness. The statement of declaration of independence is Nanu Nanu Nanam Budu Nanam Budu Nanalla Nanalla Ideha Ideha Manabuddhi Manabuddhi Nanalla Nanalla Sachidanandatma Sachidanandatma Shivananu Nani Shivananu Nani Shivoham 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 Shivoham. Shivoham. You are the nature of pure consciousness, Atma, and Atma and Paramatma are one. When it operates through this body-mind complex, you feel I am a jiva, a soul who is identified with the body. You are not that. The declaration of your independence is called Guru Purnima. The realization of your true nature is called Guru Purnima. 
to disseminate the truth in a group, in a satsanga, is Guru Purva. The moment you say the spirituality, first thing comes is, a spirituality means you have to run away from the life. You have to go to some forest. You have to change your dress. At least hashtag. <laughs> and have one feet long beard. I asked somebody one feet long beard, why? So nowadays people know they measure enlightenment by the depth of the beard. <laughs> if you have one feet deep beard, that means you are more deeper into enlightenment. <laughs> so same token, the, then, then uh, the corollary to that is that. Since women cannot have beard, they cannot get enlightenment. The enlightenment or liberation is birthright of everybody, my dear. And that's why all our rushis have struggled so much to create a large amount of literature and Upanishads and Vedanta for all of you. <coughs> to understand that simple truth. And truth is not very complex. Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. The truth is always beautiful. Truth is always straight. Okay? So, if you have to explain the truth in five pages, then it's not truth, it's untruth. The truth can be explained only with a few direct, simple words. And then only it's truth. For a falsehood, it requires a lot of explanation. And you know, the battles in the court goes on for days together. The battles in the court is not about truth, it's about untruth. So that's why it goes on forever. If it was about truth, it would have been sorted out immediately. The truth is direct and simple. To realize the truth, to experience the truth is called Guru Purima. And the moment we say spirituality, another thing comes into your mind. Miracles. Okay? The fascinating miracles, especially, especially the TV, the media which is projecting the spirituality in terms of miracles, magic. Okay? In reality, there's nothing related to spirituality. The spirituality is very, very simple, straight, straightening out your living. Now your living life has become very complicated. Every day you have to play so many roles. Husband, wife, boss, all right? Be your own self. Live naturally. That's called sadhastiti. That's called spirituality. <laughs> And when you live in such in the natural state, you will not hanker of miracles. Whatever happens in life, you accept as beautifully, you contribute to life beautifully and meaningfully. That is spirituality. So there was a Zen master. Somebody asked Zen master, people call you enlightened one, people call you dhani, wise one. What is special about you? The Zen master said, before enlightenment, I used to go to the forest, chop wood, I used to go to the well, fetch water, I used to cook food and eat food. Cut, cut wood, fetch water, cook food and eat. Then after enlightenment what happened? Very curious. After enlightenment also, I go to the forest, cut wood, Fetch water and cook food and eat. Are a big deal here. What is this Atma Dana enlightenment at all? At least I should get some magic or miracle. No, I should get a promotion immediately. Or I should have a boy child instead of a girl child. Because my that uh, what is it? The surgeon has told that you have a child, baby child, girl child in your body, uh, in your this thing. Right? Or should I should get some money, lucky draw. Or I should my health health problem should be solved. Are Baba, they are related to not related to you, they are related to body, mind, complex, which are not you. The spirituality is about discovering who you are. Before enlightenment, I used to go to forest, cut wood, chop, chop, chop wood, fetch water and eat. Now what is the difference between after enlightenment? Only one difference is there. What is the difference? After enlightenment, my mind is very peaceful, silent. Before enlightenment, my mind was a monkey. Kacha picha, kacha picha, kacha picha, dancing like a monkey. And Mukti, please understand, 
your mind becomes silent, peaceful. That's all, finished, mukti. If you think that mukti means you start getting some miraculous powers, then you have to go to a, not a sadhguru, go to some magician and learn some magic. At least you'll get some entertainment program. Mukti is how to make your mind silent and peaceful. That is called mukti. That's called liberation. Mukti or liberation does not mean mukti from your wife. Mukti or liberation does not mean mukti from your husband. Mukti or liberation does not mean running away from the world. Mukti or liberation means only one thing. Liberation from your monkey mind. That's called mukti. Mind becomes peaceful. That's called mukti. So Guru Purnima is the day of celebration, remembrance of mukti, the enlightenment, which is birthright of every human being. There's no qualification, no age, no sex, no bar for this. You saw Shishnar Sharif Sharif Sahib, a Dnani. It doesn't require a lot of qualification of birth in some family. Many people are proud of birth in certain family. You have to drop that pride. Mukti is your true nature. Mukti is my true nature. Mukti is everybody's nature. In liberation, we are all one. So this is actually Guru Purnima. That's why most beautiful symbol of spirituality is actually lotus flower. I don't have lotus flower here, so I think this is lotus flower. Okay, this is a rose, wood, rose flower, but think it is lotus flower. The lotus flower is born in a mud pond. It's born in mud. It grows up in water and it opens up to sunlight. The color of the lotus flower has nothing to do with the qualities of the mud. The lotus is never affected by water which is there around it. And lotus blooms with sunlight, the wisdom. The place what we are born in any country, any region is mud. Mud in the sense, we go through a lot of cultural conditioning, social conditioning when we are born. And where the place we grow up is called samsara. The place where surrounding us and we are trapped by, we are actually carried away by the floods of waters of samsara. This, the pulls and pushes here and there, whether it's office, stock market, husband or wife or children, causes stress in us. That is the water of samsara. Lotus is not attached to anything. That's why our rushis have been time and again to remember, remind you of the nature of mukti. They show a lotus in the hands of all deities, divine beings. Narayana, Shanka, Chakra, Gada, Padma. Padma is lotus. The lotus symbolizes enlightenment, liberation, mukti. To be born in mud, to grow in water, but not attached by water, not to have the qualities of mud, but to open up to sunlight. The sunlight represents the highest wisdom, Vedanta, Upanishad, the truth about your own nature. To open up that is called, is symbolized by lotus. So that's why Narayana and all our deities have lotus in their hand. Then we see some deities sit in the lotus. Then somebody asks why they are sitting in lotus. They don't have a chair or sofa. We can put. They are sitting in lotus because their posture is of enlightenment, the wisdom. They sit in a posture of wisdom. They sit in wisdom. That's why it's. And Guru Pada Padma. So then may people start imagining Guru Pada means it must be very soft. Guru's feet must be very soft. After enlightenment, it should become like a flower. Or at least Guru should be standing on lotus. It is none of that. Guru stands on lotus of wisdom, enlightenment. 
Guru Paduka, what Puja you did? <coughs> Guru Paduka represents the protection for the feet of the master. And what is feet of master, Guru? The feet of master is Jnana and Prema, Atma Jnana, the self-knowledge and love. That is the feet of the master. And the feet of the master is protected by Paduka, Viveka and Vairagya, discrimination <coughs> and dispassion. So this is the protection for the feet of the master. So we respect not the physical Guru Paduka, it is the Viveka and Vairagya. So that Viveka and Vairagya may let it come to our life, that is the respect for the Paduka. And Guru Pada represents Atma Jnana, Self-Realization and Prema, Love and Compassion. <coughs> the person who becomes Self-Realized has tremendous amount of compassion for the world, love for the world. Before enlightenment, Buddha was an emperor, Buddha was a king. Everyone was getting done for him and he didn't have to do anything. To lift his feet, somebody was there. But after enlightenment, almost 40 years, ceaselessly he taught morning to evening, taking the truth of self-realization to look and call out of the country. And that is what Buddha is, compassion. Nana and love, prema. These are the feet of the master. So Guru Purnima is the day respecting Guru Pada, Guru Pada the feet of the master. Guru Paduka, Viveka and Vairagya. Now if you are under the impression that Guru is a body, he is no body. Guru speaks through a body, but Guru is not a body. Guru is pure consciousness, Shuddha Chaitanya. And that's your nature also. You are also not body. You are pure consciousness and the body is the vehicle of that consciousness. The moment you realize that I am the vehicle of consciousness, I am the, I am servant of that consciousness, I am, this is the vehicle of the consciousness, a deep compassion and love blossoms in your heart. That is called enlightenment, that's called mukti. Otherwise we live life in selfishness, ego, and our life is not, has no meaning. A human life becomes meaningful only when you realize your true nature. So Guru Purnima is the day you realize your true nature. So there is a great psychologist called Maslow who created a hierarchy of needs. He's a very wise man. There's a physical need, there's a security need, there's an emotional need, there's a recognition need, and then there's called self-actualization. The one aspect which is not shown in that hierarchy of needs is called self-realization, Atma Jnana. Self-actualization is becoming aware of your full potential, achieving your full potential. Self-realization is real, realizing your true nature. So Guru Purnima is for Atma Jnana and realizing your full potential as a great human being. Like a lotus which blooms in wisdom. A person who has dana blooms in wisdom of Atma Dhana. Divine qualities manifest through that body-mind complex. The compassion, love, wisdom, clarity of thinking, they manifest through that body-mind complex. Celebration of that is called Guru Purnima. Guru Purnima is recognition is the, is the celebration of all these. Guru Purnima is the day which we offer our gratitude to the masters who have been, who have done a lot of effort, a lot of work to bring this knowledge and wisdom to us. It's a respect for Veda Vyasa Maharshi. It's a respect for lineage of teachers, masters who have taken the wisdom generation to generation and passed it on to us. Guru Purnima is the day for respecting your spiritual master, whoever that is. So that is Guru Purnima. And who is Guru and who is what is Purnima? <coughs> Guru is the principle which operates through body-mind complex. The mother is the first Guru. 
the guru principle operates through the mother to bring you up the father is a guru the mother father is a guru your friend is a guru your enemy is a guru from anybody you learn something they are guru for you even from your enemy you can learn they are guru masters that's why he said guru principle is not a body akanda mandala akaram vyaptam yena characharam whole universe is pervaded by guru principle you can learn from the plants you can learn from the animals you can learn from the sky that is the guru principle operating in various ways but there is one sub guru principle which is enlightening principle which operates through a body mind complex and brings the wisdom of atma gnana through you the guru also teaches you vedanta upanishad they are called shiksha guru then finally they say come to your convenient life diksha guru a gnani who can enlighten you and show you the path of liberation that's called sadguru so guru prince guru guru purnima is a respect for sadguru tattva the all our life we have gone through many many lifetimes and the longing for liberation and truth has been there in us long time <coughs> that is illustrated by story of buddha buddha current buddha was called gautam buddha previous buddha was called kashyapa buddha <coughs> so buddha at that time seeking truth enlightenment wandering all over the place and he came to a place where kashyapa buddha was sitting and kashyapa buddha many people had come to kashyapa buddha so guru the, the current buddha he was actually not a, is a wandering monk that time he came to kashyapa buddha so when he was going near kashyapa buddha people are taking some offering to buddha some flowers and fruits this person didn't have anything one worker one servant was there she felt a pity on this person and she gave some blue lotus to him you give to buddha and ask for blessing that will come to you so this person took that lotus and offered to buddha and as buddha said buddha looked at him and he said i also want to become buddha like you i also become want to become enlightened and i want to uplift millions of sentient beings who are suffering please give bless me with that and that's why he's called bodhisattva who keeps on working for his enlightenment and liberation of all living beings so that is buddha and buddha kashyapa buddha smiled at him and buddha after that took many lifetimes and became gautam buddha the lady the servant maid who gave him the lotus flower blue lotus flower in that lifetime became his wife yashodara in that lifetime so many lifetimes you have been looking for mukti enlightenment <coughs> guru purnima is the day to respect that work renew our effort towards mukti enlightenment <coughs> So in Atma Jyoti Satsang, we work. We have a small group of people who are working on various aspects of seva, which is dharma, consists of manushi yatna, bhuta yatna, rushi yatna, deva yatna. This is what is called, what is actually a prescription for a grahastha ashrama to do service in the form of five different type of yatnas. The main yatna is rushi yatna. learning of the teaching of spiritual masters disseminate bring it in your life and give it to others that's called rushi yatna this celebration is part of rushi yatna so we conduct rushi yatna with whatever constraints we have as grahasthas we have constraint the same job difficulty so much stress which we which venkat uh, spoke of is also there me job is stressful there's a family life the children you have to take care in spite of all these we can work for our liberation mukti so that is guru purnima so don't think the teachings are for somebody the teachings are for you teachings are there for each of us to bring into our life and experience highest bliss so the celebration of mukti is realization that my nature is bliss atma gnana so that is guru purnima so let us do a sankalpa on the occasion of guru purnima on the occasion on the occasion of shri guru purnima of shri guru purnima we respect we respect all the masters all the masters who are brought 
ಇದು ವಿಷ್ಣು ತಮ್ಮ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡೇ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡೇ ವಿ ಕಮಿಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕಮಿಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಪಾಥ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಪಾಥ್ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಧರ್ಮ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಫುಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಫುಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ಟು ಡು ದೇವತಾ ದೇವತಾ ಭೂತ ಭೂತ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಋಷಿ ಋಷಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇವಯಜ್ಞ ದೇವಯಜ್ಞ ಪಿತೃಯಜ್ಞ ಪಿತೃಯಜ್ಞ ಋಷಿಯಜ್ಞ ಋಷಿಯಜ್ಞ ಮನುಷ್ಯಜ್ಞ ಮನುಷ್ಯಜ್ಞ ಭೂತಯಜ್ಞ ಭೂತಯಜ್ಞ ವಿ ಕಮಿಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕಮಿಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ bring into our own life bring into our own life and and share the wisdom share the wisdom to over meets may all the rishis may all the rishis bless us bless us with health with health wealth wealth prosperity prosperity and and atmadnana atmadnana so this is guru purnima may this guru purnima bring the blessings of all the masters to all of you uh, you can show that video so this guru purnima has been possible because of the selfless service done by many of the atma jyotis the so the self uh, show a small video on the work which we are doing in the light of self foundation